Hi everybody, it's Robin Riley again for Del Bello's Designs. Today I'd like to show you how to create a frozen bubble. Before that though, let me invite you to join our Facebook pages. Come on over to Facebook, search Del Bello's Designs Lounge and Del Bello's Designs a la carte and join us there. You'll see tons of inspiration, tons of ideas, and some of the most creative people on Facebook. So we would love to have you join us and hang out with us there. Okay, let's get started on this frozen bubble and look at the supplies that we will need. Okay, you're going to need a piece of card, four and a quarter by five and three quarters. I like to use 300 GSM card because it withstands a lot of moisture. Also, for framing the card, I will be using a piece of black 65 pound card, which is measured four and a half inches by six inches. The stamps that I'll be using today, Lavinia Fairy Fir Tree, number LAV478, and Fir Tree number one from Lavinia, LAV094. The two little bunnies, the critters that I'll be using, come from the Cardio Christmas Companions A6 stamp set, which is number CCSTCHR-17. The other items you will need will be some type of a circle stencil. I'm using an old one that I made many, many years ago. I will be using the two inch small circle to create my bubble. Now, in Del Bello's shop, uh, there is a really nice uh, stencil full of circles, various sizes. I'm sure it's far better than what I'll be using today, so check that out for yourself. Again, the circle size is two inches. You will also need a piece of acetate. This is just a scrap piece. I save all those little pieces that come in stamp sets. And this is what is going to help us create the reverse image of the rabbit. And this is one of the only ways I can get a halfway decent reverse image is by using an acetate sheet. I know there are many ways to do it, but for me, this is the most comfortable way. Also, you will need a piece of copy paper, which will be torn to create our uh, snow banks. And let me do that right now for us. Keep in mind when tearing, to always tear is if you are pulling a check out of a checkbook. This is the piece that I will be using to create my snow banks. For the inks, I am using distress inks today. The main reason is I want to use them up. I don't want them anymore <laughs> and I hate to waste them. If you have distress oxide in these inks, I'm gonna suggest that you use that because your blending will be quicker and much easier and much smoother. The colors that I'm going to be using today are Chip Sapphire, which makes for one of the best night sky colors. I will be using Seedless Preserves and Black Soot. These two colors will be creating the dimension in the sky. For the stamps, I'll be using VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. My blending is done with makeup brushes. You can use whatever you want. I am most comfortable with using my blending brushes. Two different paint brushes that I'll be using. I will be using a fan brush, and I will also be using this very fine pointed brush, which is considered a spotter brush. These are not expensive brushes. I know you can get very nice ones through Patty's store, so I suggest that you get those from there. I will be using two other pencil-like tools. This is a Faber-Castell eraser pencil. Perfect, uh, it's labeled Perfection 7056. It's a soft pink tip eraser, which is good for erasing pencil marks, chalk marks, and it will actually erase ink. Uh, a little hack here, this is uh, what I use all the time to create highlights in an inked image. 
The other tool is a blending paper stump that I will be using. It is literally just rolled paper. It has pointed ends on both ends. Sometimes I've seen them where one end is flat and one is pointed. Um, it's very easy if you're using colored pencils to blend those together. The colored pencils that I will be using. First of all, I will be using a white chalk pencil. This is a charcoal white pencil from Generals. Any white charcoal pencil will do. This is easy to work with. Now, a lot of people I've seen that create the frozen bubbles use pens. Fine, you wanna use a pen, go ahead. I don't trust myself with a pen. I make mistakes. So the white charcoal uh, pencil has proven to work better for me. I will be using a black Prismacolor pencil to fill in areas that may not stamp perfectly. Any colored pencil will work. Keep in mind, all blacks are not equal. Some blacks are more blue, some have more purple, but I do find this one matches the Versafine Claire very well. For highlighting my bubble, I'm going to be using a combination of these colors. Again, these are all from Prismacolor. This beautiful pink color is called Processed Red, Chartreuse, Light Aqua, and this is an Indigo Blue. Now I suggest that you Google search images of bubbles so you'll get an idea of all the different colors that can be used. And seriously, you can use any colors that you like to create your bubble. And those colors just create the reflection that are seen in a bubble. And Google Images will show you lots of cool ones. And then you can design from there if you would like. Now to create the snowdrops and to create the, um, uh, the, the, the really bright white reflections and the sparkle in the bubble, this is what I like to use. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. This ink is like a thick paint. It's not even, I'll show you the inside, it's not even like uh, ink-like. It's more like a paint. You can add water to it. You can use it as it is thick. I add water typically to it, especially when I'm going to be creating the snowfall. I will add water to that. But as far as painting the reflections here, I'll use that really narrow, tiny brush that I showed you, and I will paint on the white. What is so nice about this white ink is that dark blue, black, and purple is not coming through. You cannot see it. It's pretty, pretty white. So that's why I like to use that. Uh, another tool that we'll be needing is a microfiber cloth. I will be using my Misty stamping tool I do not do well with acrylic blocks, so I rely on my Misty most of the time. I will be using this air hockey tool to be um, smoothing and pressing my stamps into the card. I find that easier on my hands. I will be adding some glitter to the card. I'm not a glitter person, to be honest with you, uh, but I do have a little bit of shimmer in the snow. And I will be using a Wink of Stella brush, which is a, uh, a glossy clear one. It's number 999. All right, let's get started with our card. I'm going to create a snowbank by using this piece of paper here, masking off the bottom. Now, if you feel more comfortable taping this down onto your work surface, go right ahead. But for the sake of time, I'm going to try to uh, do this a little quicker so you don't get bored watching me. I'm going to just hold it. First layer of ink is going to be with a chip sapphire. Now. I'm going to suggest you don't do what I do at this point. I'm going to move along quicker just for the sake of not boring you to death. When you do this, go light-handed, make several passes over your paper to create the color that you would like to have. I'm going to try to do this a little quicker, like I said, as, as not to bore you. One rule of thumb is to always start off the paper, start blending here, and then slowly drag it onto your card, re-inking as needed. A 
applying a light layer. Again, I'm gonna go a little heavier for the sake of time. I always start at the top and then work my way down to add the next layer. Now try to keep in mind that you want your darker part of the sky towards the top of your card, keeping it lighter near the snowbank. Being that this is such a dark sky, stamping the rabbits partially into it, you want it to be a little bit lighter, that way the rabbits will stand out. Don't worry about the blotchiness. Uh, that's just going to actually add to the dimension of your sky. I just love this color. I have to be honest with you. Now remember, I'm using the Distress ink, not the Oxide. If you use Oxide, you're going to get a nicer blend than what, what is occurring here. It's probably going to go a little quicker too for you. All right, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to open up the Seedless Preserve. Being that this is in the same family color, I will use the same brush for this. I'm going to add some Distress Seedless Preserve. Again, stamping off, tapping off, not to get too dark of a color. And I'm going to slowly add some of the purple on top of this blue. I like this combination of colors for night skies. Again, I'm not too concerned that it's not a totally even coat. I'm okay with the blotchiness. If you think about the night sky, it's not really always the same color. You get lights reflecting, reflecting from the city or buildings nearby. So it's okay. Let it let it have those highlights and low lights, so to speak. All right, I'm going to go back to the chip sapphire, adding one more layer. You may want to do this over and over and over until you get the color that you're looking for. I'm just trying not to bore you with this part of it. Remember to keep it a little bit lighter along this line. I've always liked making my corners a lot darker than anywhere else. To me, it just adds some interest and draws your eye more to the center of the card. All right, last color for the sky. I'm going to add the black soot, switching brushes. Now this is very random. I am just going to add areas of darkness. No particular reason why. This is just going to add dimension to the night sky, create some interest. All right, that's good. I'm going to stop right there. Now, going back to my purple blending brush, I'm going to now create some of the hills. All right, I'm going to just kind of angle this down a little bit. Again, this is very random. You do as you like. The first hill, I'm going to go very, very lightly with my brush, not re-inking it because I do not need any ink. There's plenty of ink on here to do all of the banks of snow that I want to create. I can always peel this up to see. Yeah, that looks good. Now, the further down I go with creating my snow banks, the harder I'm going to push for two reasons. One, I'm going to have less ink on the brush. And two, I want to create the illusion of the banks being further away. So more ink on the bottom, not to worry about what just happened there. That's fine. That's just going to add interest. And my very last snow bank that I create 
You can see how I'm changing the angle. This is going to be the darkest. And I'm really going to have to push to get more ink from this brush because it's drying out. Again, I'm not worried about these little blotches that are appearing. It's just going to add to the interest. I'm not being really too specific about the, these areas. All right. So I do have somewhat of an appearance of the closeness of the snowbanks getting further away as we travel up into the, the, uh, into the night sky. All right, fun part, here we go. Let's create that frozen bubble. Using my two inch circle, I'm going to place that mm, kind of in the center, approximately in the center. I am going to be using the white chalk pencil. Now with the white chalk pencil, what I'm going to do, I'm going to only mark what's in the night sky, the dark area. I'm not marking anything below in the snow. So running my pencil along the inside, sorry for the squeaks, just the inside of this circle, I wanna give myself a boundary of a circle. Now what's nice about using the chalk is if my pencil would slip, I could take that eraser and fix it. If I were using a pen, ugh, I'd have to start all over again. So that's why I recommend using a chalk pencil. There's my bubble. The next thing I'm going to do is add the highlights of the bubble. Again, Google search bubbles, check out the images get an idea of, of where these could be and the different shapes. I'm sticking to just uh, elongated triangle shapes here. You can do, I've seen people that do squares, they've done oblong shaped um, ovals. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but for the, for the sake of ease, we're gonna just stick with the triangle. I'm gonna start by making a line about an eighth of an inch away from the inside of that circle. I want it to be somewhat rounded to give it that dimension. Make this bubble look as round as I possibly can. Straight line, then create that triangular shape, and I'm going to color it in with this chalk pencil. I'm gonna repeat that. This time, it's going to be much longer. Staying about an eighth of an inch away from the inside edge of that bubble, I'm going to create this elongated As you can see, it's getting a little tougher to get the chalk to work. The chalk does pick up a little bit of the ink from the card. If that happens to you, just take that pencil, scrape it onto a, a scrap piece, clean it up a tad bit, and then go right back at it. Last one I'm going to make kind of going the other direction, so to speak, about an eighth of an inch away, creating this long triangle, coloring it in. This is just a guide, so to speak. All right, you can see already the reflection of this bubble starting to appear. Now using our colored pencils, I would take one at a time and I'm going to add very lightly colors in just random areas. There is no rhyme or reason. I am doing a, an extremely light shading with my pencil. I am not pressing hard because I don't want lines. And what I mean is I don't want lines appearing. I want a very nice shaded area. And again, very random where you put these colors. They do not need to be vibrant. Less is more. I have learned after making so many of these bubbles, uh, initially I added so much color that it, it looked too fake. So by just adding very light areas of color around the bubble, it, it's just a nicer effect to me, for me, for my eye anyway. You can bring this, these colors in further. There's really no right or wrong way 
my only suggestion is less is more. Don't overdo it. All right, I want to add some of this chartreuse. I just love this color. Again, remember, you're using a pencil. If you do something too hard or there's too much of it, erase it. That, that, that's the beauty of a pencil. Erase it. Right now, I, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I may revisit this as time goes on to add a little more color here or there. You can add some color on that white if you want. All right, I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out at this point in time. So I'm going to move on now to the darkest color that I'm using, which is the indigo blue. You could use a very dark purple. You could use a black if you wanted. I personally like this dark blue against this back sky, uh, the back of the sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently outline the bubble just in some random areas. Again, this is really random. Now, if you don't feel confident enough to do this freehand, so to speak, you could bring back that stencil, line it up, and then just trace around that bubble if you want. But I feel pretty confident doing this way. I'm only going to do one half of the bubble. I'm not taking this dark blue all the way around because I want it to be darker on this side and lighter on the right side. I'm going to grab my blending stump right now. And all I'm going to do is rub it gently over these colored pencils to let them blend together a little bit. Not too much, but enough. It almost creates a little bit of a shine too when you blend this paper stump over. Now a little tip when using a blending brush or a blending stump, I should say, you will get some color on the end of whatever. God, excuse my fingernails, that's pretty bad. You will get um, some color. So again, taking a scrap piece of paper, just rub that color off to clean it. There is also a sandpaper tool that you can use that cleans it, but this works just as well. You can just clean it off that way and then use it, not worry about contaminating other colors. All right, let's move on to the stamping now. I'm gonna bring in my Misty. Yes, my magnets are broken. And yes, it hurt when they broke because my fingers were in between there. All right, let's get our little critters. Again, thinking about dimension, always. I am thinking about the dimension. Larger images to the bottom of the card, smaller images to the back. So I am using my smaller rabbit in the background. He is the one that's peeking in. Let me get him placed. These things stick to my fingers. Okay, I'm gonna get him placed where I like him using the uh, VersaFine Clear Nocturne. I'm going to ink him up really well, being that I'm stamping on somewhat of a dark background, at least part of him is. Pressing that onto my card, using my tool to help press that in to the card itself. Oh, there's that sweet little thing. Now, let me just clean off my fingers real quick and this bunny. Had to grab a baby wipe because I can't find my rag. I dropped it somewhere. Okay, now here's a unique part. We're going to grab that piece of acetate. I'm going to slide my card up just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, I'm going to grab this piece of acetate. I'm going to hold it down with a magnet. Now, if any of you have ever tried stamping on acetate without a misty, you'll be slip sliding away like you're on ice. So I have found this to be a very helpful way. I anchor it with my magnet. I'm going to just set the rabbit randomly, wherever, no rhyme or reason. I'm going to ink it somewhat generously. I don't need tons. Pr 
press it gently, just with my finger this time, because I'm on acetate. I'm not too concerned about that blotchiness, to be honest with you. I kind of like when that happens when I'm doing a reflection, because if you think about it, a reflection is not perfect, typically. I'll clean that little guy off here. This will stay wet forever on the acetate. Oops. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let me make sure my card is nice and secure here. I'm going to take that piece of paper that, that helped me uh, create my snow bank, match it up the best I can. Actually, just a hair below is what I'm gonna do. Just a hair, ha, hair, rabbit, get it? Silly. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, here's the wet side, you can see how much darker that is. I'm going to lay the hair down, this is creating the reflection, very gently onto, without sliding the acetate, and I'm going to rub with my fingernail. I don't wanna push too hard because if I push too hard, I can actually make the ink push outward and it really makes a mess. So I'm going to hope I do an okay job here. Now, right along that baseline, I'm going to give it a little bit of an extra push because I'm hoping not to have to fill in. But if I have to, it won't be that big of a deal. Okay, let's remove and hope for something good. Ha ha ha, yes. It's exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted it to be not solid. I wanted it to be as close to a proper reflection as possible. And I was able to get a nice clean line up against that snowbank. Now, let's say I didn't. Let's say it was missing. There was a gap and I could see some of the, the sky. That's when you bring in your black pencil and you would just very lightly shade that in. No one will ever notice. All right, I'm gonna give this a very quick dry with my heat gun. Okay, that, that's good enough. I just don't want my hands to run through there and, and make something slip and slide. Let's add some of our trees. Now, what I'm going to do is start with the largest tree. This is the Lavinia Fairy Fir Tree. I'm going to be stamping that in the black ink. Oh, that wasn't very good placement, was it? All right. I want, it, I want it to be as tall as possible. I want it to be in full scene. So what I'm going to do is use the VersaFine Black, give it a good inking. Pressing it onto my card using my air hockey tool. All right, good image. Now I'm going to do a second generation print with this stamp. Just gonna make it a little lower. Just adding some interest and dimension. I'm not going to press as hard because I do not want a dark image. Ah, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Now I'm going to switch and use my smaller fir tree. This is fir tree number one. I'm going to try to create a little dimension by placing this one mid-ground in the scene. First generation stamping of this. I'm not going to use my tool. I'm going to just use my fingers. I don't want it to be super dark. I'm hoping to get it to be a tad bit lighter, which uh, it's a tad bit, not much, but a tad bit. Flipping to the other side, I'm going to move my card in the corner to help me. And since I already have the ink on here, no, I don't think it's a good idea. Let me clean this. I was gonna try something, but uh, I think I know better. Let me get that cleaned off. All right. Darkest image in the foreground. Using VersaFine Claire Nocturne again. I'm 
and quickly do a second generation of the same tree, a little bit off the card. I like when things are falling off the card a tad bit just because it creates a lot of interest. Ah, perfect. I don't want it any different than that. All right, we're going to add our last critter now to the scene. Let me make sure I get the right one. Now, this is the larger of the two rabbits. Again, creating that dimension. I want him a little more to the bottom of the card, looking up at his buddy, wondering what in the world's going on up there. Versifying Claire, lots of ink. Good image. Okay, excellent. I am happy with that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now start to add some of the details to bring this more to life. So let me move my Misty out of the way. All right, I'm going to start now just adding a little bit of the shadows. I like to ground my rabbits so that they don't look like they're floating in the air. I'm going to start with a very light, soft hand. And here's a little tip for you. The further up you hold the pencil, the lighter your shading will become. The further down, the darker the line will be that you get. Just a little tip I learned a while back. All right, I'm going to do the same for this guy here. Start out with a light. Light coat. Then I'm going to come in just a little bit darker, the closer to his little body. Now rabbits have to hop, so I always like to add footprints. They don't have to be perfect, but they show he kind of shows you the path he took to get to where he is now. I'm going to go back and grab that blending tool that I used. And I'm going to softly color over those grounding marks of the rabbits and create somewhat of a shadow. Now you can play and play and play with this all day long, which some days I do. I like to go over the footprints a little bit just to give some dimension to them. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more black in this area. Very lightly though, let me get that out of my hand. Very, very lightly to create this shadow. Remember the shadow was always the fullest right up against the object. And then typically it gets lighter as it goes away and more narrow. All right, I'm happy with that. Now, let's look at that bubble. What else do I want to do to that bubble to make it come to life? I could, if I wanted, add more color, which I think what I'm going to do is add a little more pink in this area. Again, this is all to your liking. There, there are no rules. There's no right way. There is no wrong way. This is your creation. This is what you like. This is what you see. And that's all good. Whatever it is, it's good. Okay. I'm basically rather happy with that. I'm going to take my white chalk pencil one more time. And I'm just going to define the inside of the bubble just a tad bit more. I don't need a lot. But I just feel as if I could make it pop a little bit more. If I add just a little bit of white. All right, at this point, using my chalk pencil, I am going to make the little burst, the little shimmer. You don't have to do this. Some of you may not even like the looks of that. I tend to like it. It's just another piece of whimsy, I think. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plus sign. And then I'm going to put an X right on top of that. And that's it. That's all I need. That is sufficient for me. Now, I'm going to use the Bleed Proof White Ink from Dr. P.H. Martin. What I like to do is, with that very small, pointy brush, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to the pot, and then I mix it right here in the lid. Oops, got a little snow falling already, but that's okay. That'll work. What I'm going to do is very carefully paint these triangles. These reflections are going to really stand out now. Just take your time. And you know what? You don't even have to do this if you want to. If you're happy with yours as it is, then you're good with the uh, chalk marks. That's fine. I just like to add a little more of a pop of white. And as you can see, I only dipped this one time into that little bit of watered down ink and I have been able to spread it rather consistently over. That's enough. I think I'll be happy with that. Now I'm going to dip finally here and I'm going to follow that mark that I made. A plus sign. Sorry, I work in all different angles. Um, I, I've learned to let the artwork come to you. I don't care if I'm upside down, if I'm crooked, it's where I'm comfortable with my hand. I'm gonna give it a little extra white in the center to brighten that up. And I'm going to call that quits. One thing that's nice about this ink is it does clean up with water, so no, no worries there. Okay, how about some snowfall? So to do snowfall, this is what I like to do. Again, using the Bleed Proof White Ink, I dip my fan brush just in a little bit. I don't need much. Tap it off onto my workspace. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of water to water this down. That's way too much. I didn't even need that much, but it's okay. I'm going to tap quite a bit of this off. And I like using my finger. I know people use pencils. They use another paintbrush. You use what you're comfortable with. But I feel like my finger, I have more control. So what I'm trying to do here is get the biggest splots, splats off of my brush. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to very gently start tapping, leaving smaller snowflakes, hoping I don't get a big blob anywhere. And I want this all over. I want it on top of my bubble. I want it around my bubble. I want it on my critters. I want it on the snow banks. Now this ink dries rather quickly. I'll let you see a little closer. You got a little bit, even though it's white on white, you can still see the dots of snow in there. All right, let me clean off my surface here so I don't make a bigger mess. This is just about dry. It does not take long, especially if you use smaller uh, droplets of that ink. I'm going to get the Wink of Stella, which this is, it, it, I'm not a glitter fan. I, I just am not. But this is a nice way to add glitter without all of the mess. What I'm going to do is just add a few highlights to the trees this is clear, but it will lead, leave a little bit of a shimmer. 
And I'm just randomly gonna add some shimmer to the tree. Let me get the other tree, a little bit of shimmer. Remember, bring the artwork to you. Don't reach over and cause a huge smudge. Ask me how I know that. I'm going to add some shimmer to the snow banks, just running this along. You can add more, you can add less. Again, this is your choice. This is your creation. Do as much or as little of this as you want. Let me add a little bit here. And I'm going to add a little bit to my bubble itself. Give it a little bit of shimmer, a little more interest. Again, very random, my spots are sticking to the outer edge, basically, like right along that line that we created. And I'm gonna add some shimmer to my, my little burst there. And friends, that's basically it. Uh, the more you practice with the bubble, the better you will get, believe me. I have done them over and over and over before I was somewhat happy with what I was creating. Um, I'm pretty pleased with this. I hope you try this, give it a go. Please post it on our pages so that we can see how you're progressing with this. As always, if you have any questions, uh, leave comments below on this video or call me out on one of our Facebook pages and I'll try to help you out if I didn't do a good enough job explaining this to you. Take care, everybody. Have a good time trying your, your frozen bubbles. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. It's Robin again. I forgot to show you the finished product. I pushed stop before. And I do want to show you a comparison of the two cards. This is the one I created tonight, which I'm pleased with. It's fine. This is the original. The main difference I see is a richer, deeper colored sky and definitely more sparkle. The one I did tonight, which I did on, I did a lot quicker than the original. I didn't get as many layers of ink on the sky, nor did I add a lot of Wink of Stella to give, get the sparkle, but it's still okay and I'm still happy with it. But this just shows you tonight's, the early one, this just shows you the difference in taking your time versus kind of rushing through this. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you give this a go and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.